Welcome back, my friends, to yet another touchscreen mini panels update. This update is mainly for Fight Sim 2020, and as before, for those who are new to this do-it-yourself project, there will be links at the end of this video to the earlier episodes. Let's cut right to the chase. There are good news and bad news. What does that mean? Shall we start with the bad news first? For the Microsoft Fight Sim, we know the mini panel has been using the interface software to the sim called FS2020 to Adreno. It's a reliable freeware, but we won't be using it anymore. Why? It's about the features, or rather, the lack of them. In short, there are many variables and controls. New to FS 2020 that it simply cannot access. So from this update onward, the mini panel will be relying on an interface program by the name of Spat dot Next. However, this software is payware that costs 25 euro. Now the good news is, it will allow us better access into FiSim 2020. What it means to our bottom line is. The mini panel is now able to control the Garmin GPS, the G1000, the G530, and 430, which is found in many of the aircraft. Also, the panel firmware can now tell which plane is currently loaded, potentially opening up the ability to customize its buttons and knobs. For the rest of the video, I will walk through the new features, then a brief summary. I will put the setup and configuration for Spat dot Next in the written document, since it is easier for you to follow that way. I will start with showing how to start things up. I usually launch the simulator first, wait until it is at the main welcome screen, next fire up Spat dot Next. Then turn on the mini panel. When a solid connection is detected, a thin indicator bar at the lower left-hand corner will turn green. You may have noticed the sidebar has been rearranged once again to follow the aviate, navigate, and communicate theme. In the autopilot page, the flight level change and the VNAV buttons are now enabled. The situation page remains mostly the same. The new kit on the block is, of course. The GPS pages. Those who have followed the mini panel for explain video have seen this before. Now, thanks to Spat dot Next, FS 2020 is finally catching up. This page actually lets you control four different devices. You can select between the G1000 PFD and MFD, or the 530 and the 430. After you have selected the unit, the operation is quite intuitive. The keys to the GPS functions are implemented. Two of the encoders are used as the FMS inner and outer knobs on the G1000. The third for zooming the map in and out. And the last one is shared between up down and left right panning. Now, with the rotary knobs working for you, perhaps you won't have to play this cat and mouse game anymore. Back to the situation page for a second. It is now able to display the name of the GPS waypoints, thanks to our new interface. The rest of the pages have no significant changes. That's about all the new stuff that you will see from update two. Beside the Garmin GPS, there aren't too many new features. The main effort for this update was the migration from FS 2020 to Adreno. So to summarize this update, 
For the Microsoft Flight Sim, the mini panel will be relying on SPAT.next. It enables us to continue adding features. By the way, the software has a 14 days free trial for you to give it a test run. It also means that the final release that works with FS2022 Adreno connection was 1.08.25 released back in August of 2021, which you can still download. The hardware for the panel has stayed the same. For X-Plane, it continues to use the X-Plane Direct as its interface. The enhancements developed for FS2020 have also made it into X-Plane. That is all. As usual, read the PDF files for more details. You can download the update, source files, documentation, etc. from the link in the description. Thank you for watching. Have fun.